Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments sang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who by thy glorious resurrection, the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light. Grant that we who have been raised with him may abide in his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise forever and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they had heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 33, verses 18 to 22, which are found on page 627 of the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 33, verses 18 to the end. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who wait upon his love, to pluck their lives from death, and to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him, for in his holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, as we have put our trust in you. Outside the tomb. 
As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting, there, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I love this Gospel reading. You can count on certain Gospel readings falling on certain days after Easter. You can count on the resurrection story being retold in a sort of a layered way. Next, next Sunday, you can count on the story of Doubting Thomas being told, as it's told on Low Sunday year after year. And during Easter week, no matter what gospel we've heard read on uh, Easter morning, whether it's come from Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, we can count on finding ourselves in John's gospel outside the tomb with Mary Magdalene standing there weeping. And we hear the question over and over again, woman, why are you weeping? Huh. This is a pregnant question. Because it's not just directed at Mary Magdalene, it's directed at any of us who might be standing outside a tomb of dashed hopes. A tomb where death seemed to have replaced what we hoped would be a long, happy, and fruitful life. A tomb where friendship has just been buried, where love has just been buried. A tomb where hope has just been buried. Who else knows what's buried inside that tomb for Mary, or for you, or for me? Every one of us finds ourselves standing outside a tomb where something that's dear to us is buried. And whether you're weeping on the inside or the outside, you're weeping somewhere. And the question is directed to Mary is, directed to every single one of us. Woman, why are you weeping? There's an old spiritual that I always think of when I hear this gospel passage from John's gospel. It's actually a difficult tune, and I won't sing it for you now, but the, the refrain and the title phrase of the spiritual is this, is there anybody here like Mary or Ethan? It's a rhetorical question. Is there anybody here like Mary Weepin? Of course there is. Because we've all had some reason to, be, to stand outside the tomb where things and people and hopes we love have been buried and left for dead. The writing, John's writing in the gospel is pretty fantastic. Mary's outside the tomb. And she's been asked by the angel why she's weeping. And then John says this. Gosh, it's good writing. You know, I write a lot, but if I could write one sentence like this, it would be all right. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. She saw, saw Jesus standing there, but did not know that it was Jesus. outside the tomb where love has been buried. She's weeping. And hope is standing right beside her. Life is standing right beside her. Resurrection is standing right beside her. And she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Now, if you're standing out outside that tomb or your own tomb, whatever else has been buried in there, alongside Mary, 
and she sees Jesus but doesn't know that it's Jesus, what are the chances that you're that you've seen Jesus and don't know that it's Jesus too? What are the chances that I have time and time again stood outside the tomb like Mary the weeping with Jesus right beside me and looked around and seen Jesus standing there, but I did not know it was Jesus. John is showing us a hu the human condition, even in the face of resurrection, even in the hope of new life. We are stuck in our tears, stuck in our weeping, and unable to recognize the risen Lord until he asks the same question first as the angel. Woman, why are you weeping? Like he doesn't know. And then he calls her by her name. It's not incidental that the moment of realization for Mary that the resurrected Christ is standing right beside her is the sound of her own name. Because John wants you and me to picture ourselves standing right next to her. He wants us to know that if Jesus is calling Mary by her name, he's calling you by your name and me by my name because he knows our names. He knows the number of hairs on your head. Of course he knows your name. Of course he knows who you are. Of course he knows you are weeping, and of course he knows why. She saw Jesus, but she did not know that it was Jesus until he called her name. Mary. Mary. The power of the resurrection is often standing right beside we don't know it. We don't know it. Because we haven't stopped to listen for Christ calling us by name. But if you stop and listen, you will hear. You will hear Christ calling you by name. Because he knows your name. And he loves you. And he wants to lead his resurrected life with you. And for some of us, the reason we come to church day after day is because we need to listen for that sound of Christ calling our names day after day. Which for me means that I need to be converted day after day. I need to be stopped in the tracks of my weeping day after day. I need to be prevented from seeing Jesus right there and not knowing that it's Jesus. I need, I need Jesus' help day after day in hearing my name called to remember that I know he's here with me. That I know he knows why I'm weeping. I know he knows what's buried in that tomb outside of which I weep. And I know that he brings hope and love and joy to all the things that I thought were hopeless, unlovable, and led me to despair. Is there anybody here like Mary a weeping? Stop and listen. And Christ is calling you by name because he loves you and he wants you to share his new life with him. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. 
Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, and Nora, Stephen, Nicholas, and Gordon, my priest brothers and sisters who worship and work in this place and parish, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also, so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, the members of the Congress and the courts, Tom, our governor, and Jim, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who are sick with the coronavirus, all doctors, nurses, medical workers, and essential workers of various occupations who put themselves at risk for the well-being of others, all those who are unemployed or otherwise in financial dire straits and are anxious or worried about their livelihoods, their careers, their families, and their own well-being all those who hunger and thirst for righteousness and who are struggling for justice that's been denied and working to bring about an end to the sin of racism in our hearts and in our society. And all those beloved of this parish community who are sick or in trouble, especially remembering to pray for Chris, George, Sue, Kent John, George, John, Homer, Mary Jane, Marlene, Jean, Marguerite, Kathleen, Lori, Elizabeth, Mark, Ira, Kevin, Colleen, Jameson, Julia, Will, Chris, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless this ho thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially all those who've died from the coronavirus in the past day and all those whose lives have been taken from them in acts of war and violence in recent days, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace, so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, of blessed Mark the Evangelist, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at my hands to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and hath taken away the sin of the world who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, hath won for us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, 
according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseechingly to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
the body and the bread of the The body, the bread. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of an everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.